Today I'm dropping this watermelon out of that window in order to find its real world HP. And as a reminder, every 10 feet fallen is 1d6 bludgeoning damage. 1d6. I have used fall damage to find the HP of everyday items. And there's a purpose for this beyond just the thrill of dropping things out of a window. But first, let me explain how this works. In Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, you take 1d6 bludgeoning damage for every 10 feet you fall. Using this information, I decided to drop a series of items out of my window, which is about 10 feet off the ground. I would then see how many times I would have to drop that item before I could reasonably say that it had reached 0 HP, or was dead. And then based on how many times I had to drop it for it to reach zero HP, we could find the average total fall damage dealt to each item, and therefore each item's average total HP. Right out of the gate, we have to admit that this is a fairly imperfect science, because it's difficult to objectively account for things like resistance to bludgeoning damage. Although I did my best where I thought it was applicable, not to mention that the data we're going to look at are each based on a single observation, because I haven't replicated any of these drops. Now first, I'm going to show you the actual drops I did and how this data was collected. And then we're going to take a look at the data altogether and talk about some really interesting ways that I think this experiment can be expanded on, like finding the in-game damage output of real-life items. So please stick around for that. Now the footage you're about to see is actually a compilation of short-form videos that I have uploaded to my short-form channels. So the pacing might feel a bit weird and the videos themselves are going to be vertical, but I also trimmed it all down to make it a little bit less redundant and a little bit easier to watch when compiled all together. Enjoy. Finding the HP of everyday items using fall damage. This is a 10 foot drop, and in D&D you take 1d6 bludgeoning damage for every 10 feet fallen. Campbell's cream of mushroom soup. If you'd like, pause the video and take your bets in the comments. So this is drop one. 1d6, can's looking good. I see cream of mushroom. Ah, the top did bust open. But now for the best part, making a spreadsheet. We're gonna make a fall damage tracker where we can catalog the HP of every object that we test with fall damage. Campbell's cream of mushroom, that's 2d6 bludgeoning, which means that it took a minimum of two damage, a maximum of 12 damage. So the minimum HP is two and the maximum HP would be 12. Under notes, lid broke. How much HP does a coconut have? So that's 1d6 damage. Oh, and it's already bleeding out. So we'll consider that damage, but it's not all the way open yet. So we're gonna keep going. Everything's breaking a lot faster than I think it would. Ooh, that one sounded pretty devastating. Oh yeah, there you have it. The coconut is dead, but let me show you up close. So there you go, this is the coconut after it dropped three times. This one was harder to tell because it started bleeding before it actually broke. But for now, let's update the spreadsheet. Today we had a coconut that dropped three times, meaning the coconut has a minimum HP of three and a maximum HP of 18. Finding the HP of a can of tomato sauce using fall damage. We did a can two days ago, but it had a pop top and I think that's one of the reasons that it broke so quickly. The can's pretty well bent, but no tomato sauce yet. This thing is resilient. Oh, it's so wet. The label's gone. It's more than half empty at this point. Let's go update the spreadsheet so we can get that exact number. And here's the can itself. I was so inspired by this can of tomato sauce that I made it its own t-shirt in my merch store. It looks like this, and you can find it in my profile, if that's your style. So I just went through the footage and I am thrilled to announce that this can of tomato sauce dropped a total of 69 times. <laughs> a minimum HP of 69 and a maximum HP of 414. But I've added two columns. Average HP, which is 241 or effectively 242 in this case. Or if we think that it's resistant to bludgeoning damage, then 121 HP. Finding the HP of the can of soda, tonic water specifically. All right, drop number one. There you have it. That was 1d6 of damage and it is done. Completely empty, in fact. This was Q tonic water, which was in a can. It fell one time, which means it took 1d6 bludgeoning damage. That's a minimum HP of one and a maximum HP of six, which of course is an average of 3.5 HP. But this gives us now the item with the fewest number of falls and the lowest average HP. 
finding the HP of Mayu Nase using fall damage. Four D six bludgeoning damage. Five D six. Ooh, there it is. I'm gonna leave that down there where the hose pipe is, but now let's talk about the HP. Now the Mayo Nase is interesting to me and I'll tell you why. Fell a total of six times. That gives us a minimum HP of six, a maximum HP of 36, and an average HP of 21. However, in the notes, I'm going to say that it bounced. And because of that bouncing, I think that it's actually resistant to bludgeoning damage, meaning that its actual average HP would be 10.5 or rounding up would be 11 HP. Finding the HP of Sprite with fall damage. Good lord. Oh boy, look at that. Oh, I mean, we definitely have a hole. I mean, it's spraying everywhere. So we're officially at half empty and the bottle is super battered, so that's gonna be zero HP. The Sprite fell a total of 26 times, giving us an average HP of 91. But if we judge it as being resistant to bludgeoning damage, its HP is actually 46. Today I'm dropping this watermelon out of that window in order to find its real world HP. And as a reminder, every 10 feet fallen is 1d6 bludgeoning damage. This fits just perfectly in my little basket. It's been a while since I did one of these. I was busy getting married. I don't have super high hopes for a very high HP. All right, 1d6. That's about what I expected, and I'm gonna compost that. Don't worry. First, here's our updated spreadsheet. Our watermelon fell one time, meaning it took 1d6 damage, which gives us an average HP of 3.5, rounded up to four. And now you know that watermelons have approximately four HP. Okay, so if you're still with me, here is our overall data today. As you probably saw with each iteration, the spreadsheet kind of expanded and evolved. But based on all of this data, I have an idea that I want to share with you. A potential expansion to this experiment that I think a lot of you might find intriguing. So you might have noticed that everything we did this fall damage test on was either a food or a beverage. I did this partially because I had a lot of these things on hand already, and I also couldn't justify going to buy like, you know, a toaster or something and dropping that out of the window. But also the these food and beverage items are perfect data points because we can access exact copies of them whenever we want and at a very low cost just by going to the store and buying some more. Except now we can use these items not just to find their HP again, but to find the damage output of other things. Let me explain. So fall damage is a really great, very reliable translation of in-game mechanics to real world mechanics. 10 feet falling equals 1d6 bludgeoning damage and that's it. And now that we've used that translation to get the HP of items that we can easily get copies of, we can now attack those items with different weapons until those items drop to zero HP. And in doing so, we would find the damage output of those weapons. For example, what kind of damage does a pressure washer do? We can find out by pressure washing a watermelon or a bottle of Sprite until it's reduced to zero HP. And what about a frying pan, a slingshot firing a metal D20, a 3D printed sword, a sharp stick, a sock full of batteries? You get the idea. Now, of course, to expand the experiment in this direction will also require that I find my own ability scores to account for damage modifiers and the like. But if you're interested in seeing this experiment continue in that direction, let me know by saying something, anything at all, in the comments. It could be additional suggestions, things you want to find the damage output of, potential problems you could foresee with the experiment, or just your favorite word or something like that. Just something to let me know that you would like to see more. But also, if you want to get directly involved in the conversation and support more content like this, you can do so on Patreon, which is linked in the description, or by becoming a YouTube channel member. Additionally, if you liked the uh, silly fall damage merch that I showed earlier on in the video, you can find that in my merch store, which is also linked in my description only if it's your style. No matter what though, thank you so much for watching. And my quest for you is to have an excellent, excellent day.